So my name is Margarida Librato, and first of all, I would like to thank the organization for inviting me for this talk and to present you the work we have been doing in Portugal, in the north of Portugal. So uh, I made my PhD in Lisbon in physics, and I'm at this moment a professor, associate professor in the north of Portugal at the University of Trás-os-Montes e Alto Douro, and I do research also at the Instituto Dom Luís at the University of Lisbon. Still, it's difficult to cut the bonds when we have them strong. So I'm not working in predictability. I'm studying extreme events, uh, extreme climate and uh, weather events. And today I would like to profit of this opportunity to speak about storms explosive development in subtropical North Atlantic Ocean. So first of all, of course, you all know that extratropical cyclones are really very important for climate. They are important for the energy budget, the moisture budget. And here is a result from 2013 of an intercomparison inter work we have been doing to understand better how, what is the variability of extratropical uh, cyclones and why for future um, scenarios there was such uncertainty on the, the occurrence of these events. So, of course, this is a well-known result. This is the climatology of the storm tracks. And um, if we look only to the strong cyclones, we have this uh, very nice um, pattern, which is strictly over the higher latitudes. So if we remember that we are speaking about the Southern Eastern Atlantic, we see that stronger cyclones are really not very common. They are a rare event over this region. So we are here in Iberian Peninsula, and this is a region which is of interest for us. And uh, if we remember Klaus event, uh, here we have the climatology again of the extratropical cyclones. And we see that this, this event was really very rare. It was over the edge of the extratropical um, storm track, and it came to northeast, affecting basically the northeast, the, the northern part of Iberian Peninsula, and then heading to the Mediterranean. So this was an explosive event. You all know uh, uh, an explosive event is an event that has uh, uh, decreasing in, in pressure over 24 hectopascal in 24 hours. And this was really a disturbing event over the Iberian Peninsula. It, was, it caused more than 28 deaths in Spain and France. It was the most costly event of 2009 due mostly to extreme uh, winds. And it was a record-breaking event over some parts in the southern France. So this was an event that we were interested in studying because it was rare, it was unusual for these lower latitudes uh, with such an intensity. Here I show this picture. This is not uh, predictability. This is over uh, error interim reanalysis. But this uh, picture highlights the uncertainty we have still when we use different methodologies to do this kind of analysis. So both on the trajectory and in the intensity of the storm, uh, different methodologies were uh, resulting in different results. And this kind of event was really difficult to forecast. It was, it was, <clears throat> it was um, really, and uh, a surprise even for experienced weather forecasters. As I was telling you, this intercomparison experiment gathered more than 20 universities, 20 different methodologies, and we were trying to understand why there was such an uncertainty on the results for future scenarios. And here you, in this 
picture you have the, the color bar means the agreement between methods. And you can see clearly that in some regions like the Mediterranean, you, we have a strong agreement on the decreasing on the exotropical cyclones. And in some regions like here in the Northern Atlantic, we have some agreement between three to five methods that agree that we would have an increase on exotropical cyclones. But if we look at the most extreme events, the agreement is much uh, greater. But again, I would like to highlight the region where we are talking about, where there is huge uncertainty. Some methods say we have an increase. If we look to the east, there is an, a decrease. But in fact, the uncertainty is high. So we were not expecting to have this kind of events over this region. And again, in 2010, we had another extreme event that was mostly, again, 64 deaths in France, the second most expensive natural hazard for 2010. The first was the IT earthquake, and um, the most deaths were occurring due to the storm surge. So this highlights the extreme values of uh, maxima wind gusts over Europe and the impacts that uh, occurred due to the storm surge, mostly in the western part of France and northern Spain. The storm surge was studied for, uh, with data from the Oceanographic Institute uh, available, and it's uh, really um, the, the, the black line shows the SLP, and here we see the huge drop in the SLP associated with the storm and the storm surge associated with the event. So we wanted to better understand what caused this kind of event. And um, once again, this event was um, the genesis occurred really southern in the Atlantic, and the trajectory uh, turned northeast. It had the really uh, developing phase, explosive developing phase over the northeastern uh, Atlantic, and it headed to uh, Europe where it decayed. What I would like to highlight in this uh, image is first of all, the surface wind track and the storm footprint with values over 40 meters per second over this region where uh, of the greatest intensification. And also the characteristics of the SST anomaly in this region. We have already heard today that the 2010 was really um, very uh, rare in the sense that we had the extreme high uh, values of SST in the Atlantic and, sorry. And again, during this event, we had values over two uh, standard deviations near the coast of Africa. So um, notice that we have really the, the track uh, over the edge of this uh, region of high uh, SST anomaly. So again, it was a, a, a bomb event. We had a huge decay of over 24 hectopascal in 24 hours. And what is surprising about this event is that this decay really occurred in the really southern part of the Atlantic. And remember that with geostrophic uh, adjustment, when we think about 24 hectopascal over the 40, 45 uh, latitudes, if we are further south, this corresponds to an even uh, more extreme event. Um, can I have the movie? I don't know if... Thank you. So in addition to the SST anomaly, we were also uh, looking at total precipitable water and we have, can you run the video again, please? 
And it's uh, clear that we have here a huge plume of uh, uh, moisture, tropical moisture that goes through and accompanies the storm while it's developing. And this is the characteristics of a well-known atmospheric river that was in addition to the high SST uh, a contributor, a driver for the explosive development of the storm. When we think about um, extratropical cyclones, we know that they are mostly bioclinically in, uh, in structures. And what we studied on these events, either uh, Klaus and uh, Xintia, is that the uh, diabatic uh, processes are also very important. So we have here on the left hand side, the temperature equivalent temperature near the surface. And we see that we have here values real high on the 26th February. The storm would be in this position. And um, with uh, 330 Kelvin over the region. And together in the higher level over the jet stream, we see that we have here the jet stream, which is splitting and the storm is southern to, the, to it. So um, further uh, the following day, we still have this warm, moist atmosphere in the lower levels. And again, the, the, the jet stream is now with a branch uh, to the south and another branch to the north. And finally, during the, the, the decaying phase of the storm, it is already over the, to the north of the jet stream. So we have here both processes, both the importance of the uh, moist, warm uh, temperature um, atmosphere over lower levels and the forcing of the jet stream over upper levels, which contributed to uh, intensifying this storm. So this storm, as I mentioned, was this century, 210. But we consider it really important to understand what is the return period of this kind of events. So we, when we go to these kind of meetings and we meet people from the reinsurance companies, they always talk to me about the Xinti event. They always ask me, what is the return period of this event? This is really the one million questions for them. And of course, as I was trying to explain you, it, and you know better than I, it's really difficult to do return period calculations and to do statistics when we have few events. So in this region of the Atlantic, we don't have many events. And we were looking backwards and tried to understand if this was a one uh, event that, was, uh, that had already occurred in history. And we, uh, recently in 1941, we had this similar event, which was uh, known as one of the five, five most severe windstorms in Europe during the 20th century due to the, the high impacts it had over Portugal. And using 20th century analysis and old charts, we were studying the event. We really identified that the event had an explosive uh, cyclone as well. And the trajectory is with using the 20th uh, century analysis is really similar to the Xintia one. So you have here the both trajectories superimposed and it, they are really very similar. And with this kind of data, we uh, do, did have a collaboration with, with colleagues from the civil engineering department where they tried to uh, study what would be the flooding of such an event using this uh, data. So um, they made several simulations with uh, a model of the, the estuary. This is the estuary Tagus. 
and they did simulations for the Tagus flooding, for present scenario, for worst scenario, including the high tides, and uh, considering the sea level increase of 50 centimeters. And here you see the Tagus estuary upwards, and you see the, the floodings in this region for the present scenario. And uh, comparing with the worst scenario, you see that larger regions are uh, flooding over the, these uh, regions inside the, the river. And finally, for the 50 centimeters sea level rise, of course, much more uh, regions would be uh, flooded. So to, to finish, I'd like to leave you with two simple uh, take-home messages. One of them is that we really need to understand case studies to understand better if models are able to um, simulate the case studies and how the, the models um, manage to represent all the associated impacts. And this is done mostly using uh, historical events and using historical uh, storms to validate these really very rare events. And also, I would like to highlight that it's really important to understand how this explosive deepening occur in the southern northern Atlantic to better understand the relative roles of the processes uh, in, uh, associated with the developing and explosive development of these events. So thank you very much for your attention and I'll be willing to receive your questions. Thanks a lot for the very nice talk. There is time for questions. Maybe I start. You said that one of these events, I think it was Klaus, was not well forecast. And could you, in principle, stimulate people to do reforecasts with, like, with current operational weather models and large ensembles in order to understand better why the predictability of this event was, was so low? I think, I think this is one of the reasons why I'm here, because I would like really to have this kind of cooperation. I think we should look again at these events, we should revisit these events and have detailed modeling exper experiments to understand better the different processes. Because usually we work with large ensembles, with climatological uh, um, means and analysis. And I think we should also do the analysis of specific events to better understand the physics and the drivers behind. More questions? Yeah, thank you for the talk. I, I was just curious. Um, you mentioned that the, the storm uh, had a very strong winds, right? I mean, expected. Did you look at the sting jet? Does, did it have one? Did it have particular strong winds in the sting jet? Yes, I think there are some works that uh, look at the, the sting jet. I didn't look at it because usually you, I use reanalysis and reanalysis in errant wind, it had the resolution to, to work, to, 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 to study the sting jets. But uh, we are working on other events, and there are some colleagues that are doing the analysis for just for sting jets. Okay, seems there are no further questions. So let's thank the speaker and thank all you. the other speakers of the session again. <laughs>